Hi and welcome to the Global Education Group CME video blog where we address emerging hot topics in the CME enterprise. I'm Stephen Lewis and today we're going to talk about the 100th anniversary of the Flexner Report, a really influential, influential report in medical education that's really affected undergraduate medical education in America and in Canada for the past 100 years. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the report as well as an upcoming conference that's co-sponsored by the American Medical Association as well as the Association of American Medical Colleges to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the report. So first a little bit about the history of the report. Um, it was a study of undergraduate medical education conducted in 1910 and it was commissioned um, by the AMA, its Committee on Medical Education, and it was funded via the Carnegie Foundation. Uh, the report is named after its author, an educator named Abraham Flexner, and again, it's had a huge impact on American me the American medical profession as well as undergraduate medical education. Some, uh, a little bit about the report, and it's had some positive and it's had some negative implications and findings. So back in 1910, the positive results from the report that we still see in practice today, first off, it pushed for med schools to enact higher admission standards and graduation standards. It basically advocated for four-year medical schools. At the time there were a lot of two-year medical schools and so it, it basically pushed to get rid of those two-year medical schools, many of which at the time included no laboratory work whatsoever. It also stated uh, that medical schools should strictly adhere to the protocols of mainstream science uh, in both teaching and research. Many of the American medical schools fell short of that standard and as a result, after the report was published, about half of those schools that were falling short actually either merged with other schools or closed their doors. Last, it allowed for regulation of medical schools by states. You can argue for or against the regulation, however, what the result of that was we did get more uniform standards for medical education, especially in the United States. On the bad side, the report also had some negative findings and implications. Um, it stated that there were too many medical schools in the United States and that too many doctors were being trained. Given today's uh, crisis in terms of the numbers of primary care physicians especially, perhaps the report was a little bit short-sighted. The report was also brazenly editorial and sometimes sexist and racist. On the editorial side, it describes Chicago's medical schools of the day as, quote, a disgrace to the state whose laws permit its existence, indescribably foul, the plague spot of the nation, end quote. Uh, on the racist front, um, it basically advocated that there should be very few black-only and women-only schools, um, so both racist and sexist. Um, and for the black-only schools, that they should be focused on teaching hygiene in lieu of other medical sciences to the blacks. And so the report has both a section on the medical education of women, as well as medical education of Negroes. For, as it relates to blacks, um, the report stated that there was work in, quote, educating the race to know and to practice fundamental hygienic principles and in developing schools to which the more promising of the race can be sent to receive a substantial education in which hygiene rather than surgery, for example, is strongly accentuated." End quote. The report also led to basically kind of a, re a reversion of American universities to male-only institutions and male-only medical programs. Uh, it also led to some segregation, obviously, of medical schools. Kessel and others uh, have argued that the Flexner report actually decreased the supply of MDs and drove up costs not only for medical school, for those un you know, going through medical school, as well as medical costs in general because the costs trickle down. If you have to pay a lot for medical school, you're going to charge a lot for services. And if there's a shortage of physicians, costs can be driven up as well. Well, as AMA and the Association of American Medical Colleges commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Flexner Report, rightfully, they're focused on the future. And a few things to think about as we look toward that future. We need to continue to rely on sound science, evidence-based medicine, evidence-based undergraduate education of medical professionals. We also need to look at ways we can bring physicians closer and in greater connection with not only the healthcare team, 
but with patience so that we're helping prepare those in undergraduate medical education, help prepare those future physicians in school today for what they will see in practice tomorrow. As always, if you have any questions about issues in the CME Enterprise or about the Flexner Report in particular, feel free to contact us at globaleducationgroup.com. For Global, I'm Stephen Lewis. Have a great day.